Hello, my name is Lori Ann, and I'm a registered architect. I want to share with you a story I bought from my young son. It's called Dream Building, the story of architect Bill Freeman. It's written by Kelly Starling Lyons and illustrated by Laura Freeman. It starts like this. Vision. In Phil Freelon's world, art brings, breathes dreams to life. Everywhere he looks around his Philadelphia home, paintings and drawings greet him from the walls. Phil listens to his parents discuss artists at the dinner table. He watches his big sister splatter canvases with creativity. He plays basketball with his buddies and carries a sketchbook around his neighborhood. Buildings, roses, people passing on the street, Phil sees them all and draws clear and strong. But at school, what Phil sees is out of focus. Letters on a page don't spring to life as words. His mom, a teacher, tries her best to help him. Mm, mm, uh, mm, uh, mm. What does it say? Phil lowers his head and his heart sinks. His big brother and sister are great students. His dad is a successful businessman. Why can't he see how to read? Someone in his family shows him a strength he holds inside. His pop-pop, Alan Randall Freelon, is an educator and a Harlem Renaissance painter. In his studio, Phil sees pastel homes by harbors, fishermen, still wet canvases and palettes with oily colors dare him to touch. One day, the two of them walk through the woods Phil darts this way and that until Pop-Pop tells him to sit by his side on a log. Close your eyes and listen, Pop-Pop says. Phil hears birds crooning and squirrels scampering across crunchy leaves. He smells the fragrance of earth. He feels the breeze dance across his honey skin. Phil is seeing the world with an artist's inner eye. Foundation. As Phil grows older, his special sight deepens. His thoughts have color, shape, and form. Math and science fill him up like art. Phil can see strings of numbers and formulas in his mind. Reading takes longer to master. His mom and sister recite Shakespeare for fun, but Phil freezes when called to read aloud in class. He struggles to find joy in books until he realizes that words can create images too. In time, these story portraits show him new worlds, just like art. Phil explores different media. He doesn't just draw, he writes essays and poems. He can see the shape of a car inside a block of balsa wood. He builds using his senses to create. When his father gifts him models after business trips, Phil spreads pieces of battleships, cars, and planes out like a puzzle. He doesn't need directions to know where each piece should go. Soon, his paintings, sculptures, and models begin to reflect the times. He carves African masks from, ivory, from bars of ivory soap. Black is beautiful, say it loud. I am black and I am proud. They're not just mottos, they're beliefs that live in him. His father's stories are part of him too. Stories of having to sleep in a different southern hotel than his white colleagues. Stories of being the only black man in airports except for the porters. Stories of being mistaken for an athlete instead of a businessman. In his proud black neighborhood, Phil sees people who never make the news. His neighbors are doctors, suit and tie wearing detectives, teachers, friends learning to play concert piano. Phil hears a chorus around the nation shouting for justice and equality. When his father is at the March on Washington, Phil watches on TV and feels like he's there with his dad, soaking in Dr. King's dream. Frame. At Central High School, Phil signs up for a drafting class. When the teacher asks students to look at the front of a machine and draw the other three sides, Phil gazes deep inside and can see what's out of view. He becomes the top student in his art and drafting classes. He wins industrial design competitions. An idea emerges until it becomes 
clear as a snapshot. Phil wants to be an architect, someone who designs buildings, a perfect blend of his strengths in art, math, and science. At Hampton University, a historically black college, Phil aces every architecture lesson, tutoring classmates who need help. Later, he attends North Carolina State University's School of Architecture. He soars too. But he wonders why they never study anything created by people who look like him. On his own, he discovers black architects who design celebrity homes, a university chapel. He reads about African Islamic builders, his classes left out. He thinks about artists like his pop pop, whose work made unsung people and places seen. One summer, while Phil still a student, he takes the lead in designing a solar greenhouse in Virginia. As the structure grows and listens, a dream begins to take shape. Phil wants to make the world better through what he creates. Form. As an architect, Phil turns wishes into buildings with doors and windows, plumbing and lights. By the time he founds his own firm in North Carolina, his mission is clear. He will not design prisons or casinos. Phil creates schools, libraries, bus stations, museums, places that help people, that show everyday beauty, that celebrate heritage and fill hearts with joy. Then one day, Phil hears about a dream imagined decades before he was born. In 1915, 50 years after the end of the Civil War, people dreamed of a national memorial to honor black soldiers and sailors. That dream grew until they could see a museum that would rise like a phoenix on the Washington Wall. A museum to honor black achievement, a museum to show black resilience, strength, and pride. For decades, that dream was deferred. But in 2013, in 2003, a national commission makes it come true. A museum will be created that documents black history, life, and culture. Phil and architects around the world want to design it. Dream. Years later, the commission chooses Phil and architect Max Baum to create the preliminary master plan. For months, they worked together, making a guide to future spaces and exhibits. In 2008, an international competition is announced. The willing, winning team will get to design and build the museum. For this project, Phil and Max need a dream team. They want to include someone whose work is known beyond the United States. Phil and Max meet with David Ajay, an acclaimed British Ghanaian architect. As the men talk, they watch one another's body language. Can they unite? The team clicks. Phil will be lead architect, coordinating all aspects of the complex project. David will be lead designer, coming up with ideas in collaboration with the team. They have just 60 days to plan a dream passed down for generations. They huddle around tables, talk on phones for hours, send countless emails, and dig deep. They look. They see a structure shaped like a crown worn by African kings. They see ironwork patterns foreign, forged by black artisans. They see a porch welcome. And they listen. They hear the ocean rocking ships of stolen people. They hear footsteps marching for freedom and justice. They hear voices of unsung heroes waiting for their day. In front of the judges for the competition, Phil tells the story of the dream they want to build. He feels Pop Pop, his father and mother, his family with him. His models stand proudly. His word pictures light up the room. Soon, Phil hears the words, the word that makes his heart sing. Yes. The ne their next mission is to get the museum open before Barack Obama, the first black president, leaves office. In 2016, a century after the dream was born, they deliver. In the contemplative court, Phil reads Dr. King's words, until justice runs down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. He closes his eyes and smells the moisture of the falling water, listens to the peaceful sound. The museum rises near where his father once stood as Dr. King shared his dream. Phil thinks of Pop Pop, who taught him to see like an artist. His parents, who encouraged him to create and imagine. He thinks of how every experience led him to this moment. Phil Freelon, 
the kid artist from Philly has become a builder of dreams. I really like the story because it talks about how one person went through their journey to become an architect. They took everything that was inside them, how they were interested in art and science and math and building as a kid, and decided to become an architect. More importantly, once Phil became an architect, he thought about what was important to him and what he wanted to use his role as an architect to do. He wasn't interested in building commercial places, which of course we need as well, but he personally wanted to build buildings that help people, buildings like schools and museums that help nurture our communities. And that's the type of work that I like to do as well. But it's important to know that when you go into a career like this, you can find yourself in it in different ways and different forms. And once you find your career that you're passionate about, you can tweak it and do specific types of work that you're even more passionate about. So I guess the question is, what does it take to build a dream? I hope you keep reading and I hope you keep learning about whatever it is that drives you to want to do the things that are part of your place in the world. Have a good one.